Good evening, all. Hope you're all well. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for coming over. Um, good to see you all in the chat. Uh, a couple of new, well, a new face for sure. So nice to see that as well. Thank you very much for coming over and joining us. I'm um, sorry to hear you're sick, but um, your loss is our gain. So thank you very much for that. Um, we have tonight helping us the one and only Brian from Hartwood Turning, and we have Harold, and we have Harold from TJ Turning. Um, Terry, <laughs> Terry tonight is um, gone to a quiz night. So we've got Harold standing in for us as we all, as actually, no, not us. Ruth thinks he looks like Harold Bishop from Neighbours. So well, that's true. Welcome, Harold. He does a bit like. <laughs> welcome, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tonight, he ain't got a clue what I'm turning tonight. Um, but Brian's, <laughs> Brian says I've got to do a goblet. Well, he didn't say I've got to do it. He said do a goblet. So that's what we're going to do, goblet. So I'm going to go right through the process from start to finish on how to, how to line our centres up, how to mount it, how to turn it. How to shape it, blah, blah, blah. We're going to go through the whole process. So, as always, if there's any questions while we're doing it, or there's something you want to know um, or ask the question mm -hmm. for, um, no question is a stupid question. We all have to start somewhere. There's a vast array of experience within the chat. And I'm sure that if myself or Brian can't help you, then I'm sure there'll be someone in the chat who can help you. So, like I say, no question is a stupid mm -hmm. question. We all have to start somewhere. And a couple of years ago, we were, me and Brian were where all you yep. novices are now. Well, actually, beginners, because uh, I personally still class myself as a amateur turner, novice. novice amateur turner, because there's so much to learn. Mm -hmm. um, you never stop learning. With, with, that's like anything. You never stop learning. So there's always something to learn, and there's always something you can improve your technique, uh, whether it even just be holding the gouge differently or approaching differently. There's always things you can uh, improve on. So with that, I'm going to go to the lathe, uh, and Brian's going to welcome you all in. Good, good, good plan. You go to the lathe then. Um, let's have a look, see who's in. Uh, my chat doesn't go all the way to the bike because I pressed the wrong button. Anyway. Good evening. I bet it was, uh, you can't hear you. Told you. Sap. That's that. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Let's have a let's have a look. See who's on the participants list now. Then there you go. I hear you now. But can okay. anybody hear me now? Somebody say in the chat if you can hear me. Apple Mac, here I come. Because I'm not doing anything else until somebody says you can hear me. I should hear you now. I refuse. We checked mine, but we didn't check yours. Oh, we can we can hear you, Steve, but not Brian. There you go. They should hear you now. Give them a few seconds. Uh, well, uh, uh, 
What's happening there? Show. That's because that was because sure. I had it on Soundstream. Yep. Yes, Brian. Yes, oh, Brian. Yes, Brian. Yes, Brian. Yes, yes Brian. we can. Yes, yes, we can hear us now. Thank goodness for that. Okay, so back to the participants list. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Michelle. I can hear you, dear. <laughs> Shouting at the top of her lungs. <laughs> so from the participants, there's one more time with feeling. Brent Breecroft, Brian with the Y, Colin Izzard, Fred Gulliver, Simon from <laughs> Flag Coast Wood Turning, uh, Gary Glass, Fred got no, did Colin Izzard, uh, Gary Glass, Mark Lejeune Wood Turner, Jared the French Wood Turner, James Crawford, Kevin NK Creations, Rob from Klein Sport Abrasives, Abrasives, Lewis the Klondike Craftsman, Lucy oh, Bundy Rowe, Malcolm Douglas, uh, Mark L. Uh, you all know Michelle's in because she was shouting at me a second ago. Paul Hutton, the Gooseby Thunder, Robert Broadwood, Ron Crisco, Wood Art, uh, Roy the Boy, Shane Hurst, Dodgy Characters, Des Gay Crafts, Susie the Swiss Wood Thunder, Wood Wizardry by Colin, uh, Wood Turning by Barry, and Andy the Woodwork Learner. That's all that's on the participants list. There's many more than that, and there's 58 people watching currently. So let me just change my. Screen back to uh, what do I need to change to top chat, that's what I need, or live chat, that's better. And once it repopulates itself, we'll see who else we've got. Repopulates, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just repopulated itself. Peter, uh, Peter, the part with Thunders in, I'll just scroll back a bit. Uh, did I say Gary Glass? I think I did. Callum's in, evening, Callum. Martin Boyd is in. Hmm. Yeah, Roy the boy says, "Come on, Brian." <laughs> Shut up, Roy. Don't give me any abuse. Terry's not here to defend me this evening, or uh, well, defends maybe the wrong word. Yeah. Attack. So anyway, if I've missed anybody, stick your name down at the bottom there, guys, and I'll give you a shout out. Don't want to miss you. Susie the Swiss wood turner says, "Question, question, question. Uh, what what is the wood and the size?" Um, no, find the tape. <clears throat> what do you reckon the wood is? I reckon that's a piece of, uh, I don't know. Ash. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. I got it from Michael Howe. So it's 205 mil long by 95, 97. Yeah. You mean so, about an inches for us old boys. All right, okay. So it's three and, a, three, and three quarters. By eight. There you go. Old school. Oh, hey, old man River Wood Thunder is in. He says, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Right, so first thing we're going to do is wrap it down. So, turn our lathe on. Uh, the, Andy, the Woodward Learner says, question, question. Can we take it that the no stupid question thing is a challenge? <laughs> Well, knock yourself out. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, exactly. Knock yourself out. He's right. Uh, and T Terry from TJ Tunnings in. He says, hello, Steve and Brian. Uh, and all. I can't type much. I'm watching on the phone. And I'm on the wrong channel. I don't know how you, how you, how you could be typing the thing and be on the wrong channel. with the And he says, that looks like spindle work. Please. Yeah, Steve says he's going to use a skew on it as well, Terry. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> Mind you, I might have to open a tin of wax, so... You might, sure enough. Yes, Ma uh, Lewis said, yes, Mark had an important question, Mark. Mark. Uh, William Rose creates in. Uh, if Mark had an important question, you may put it back in again, because I have lost it. William Rose creates is in. Hi, William. And many people have got now. Lose. 65 people watching. Welcome all. Lucy says, is there such a thing as a stupid question if you learn from the answer? There is There is no such thing as a stupid question. Um, we'll try and answer any question we can. And if we can't, We'll answer it later, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll find out and answer it later if we have to. So we don't know the answer, we'll make it up. <laughs> Gentleman, we don't say, really a question mark? I can't see his question. 
Let me just scroll back a bit here, Brian. You missed my question at the start. All oh, right, that's because I haven't got the start. Let me go back, see how far back I can get. Uh, no, last time Mark says is no picture. Let's go back a bit further. No, nope, that's as far as I've got. Susie the Swiss would turn up, uh, no earworm sound, and that's as far as back as I can go in the chat. So if you had a, a question to ask Mark, ask it again. I'll try not to miss it. General Wood Turner, how do you stop the stem from snapping? Asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, mm. I can't answer that one. Go a bit slower at it, don't rush so much. So I'm just going to get this around and then we'll. Uh... I think Mark must be making wine goblets again. The wooden stem wine goblets that he makes and broke a. Broke a... I wonder, did you, make, did you break more than one, Mark? That's the question. Uh, Brian with the Y says uh, Question, question, question. I have not yet bought prepared wood, only raw lumber. Is the staining on the ends of the blank. The staining on the ends of the blank sealer. Swax. And if so, isn't the side grain sealed? No, if you're if you're um, if you're sealing the ends of the wood, uh, you've really no need to to uh, seal the side grain because you that that's where the, the moisture is going to leak come out. The reason you're sealing the end grain is because that's the end of the straws, if you like, and you'll lose a lot of moisture very quickly through the straws. So if you seal the ends of the straws. Uh, the side grain releases the, the uh, moisture far, far slower. So it will help it dry. If you seal the whole thing, it'll never dry it. It'll just be, it'll just sit there. Sealing the ends just pr helps reduce yeah. some of the cracking. It does, that. It's just, it basically slows down the moisture loss. Uh, Ruby flares in. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Right, so we're round. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Glass says, oh, Mark, I'm pretty sure the stem breaking was a defect in the timber. <laughs> no. I think you're missing the point there, Gary. <laughs> Lucy Bundy Rowe says, uh, Lewis, uh, I always ask stupid questions. I'm renowned for it. Do not believe that. All right, so we're just going to put a tenon on the end of this. Yeah, Terry says, that looks like Sycamore on my phone, but the picture is tiny. Uh, I don't it could know. be Sycamore. I don't know what it is, Terry, because... Uh, I, 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 can't see what, I can't see the grain so much, so... It's uh, a piece I got, like I say, I got from Michael when I was down there. Uh, it could be anything. Ben Jarman's in. Stand okay. by your beds. Ben's in. We're in trouble now. Trouble up, mill, lad. Seventy two people watching me. Oh welcome everyone. So remember when you're using your parton tool, you're not going in like that. You're actually using it as a cutter, so you're actually pushing it uphill <laughs> until you get to a point where you have to lift the handle to then start using it for lower down. Well, that's another you, question apparently. If you bring it in there, you're using it as a scraper, which is not what we want. We want to use it as a cutter. So we're bringing it in and just gently lifting the handle till we get a cut. So, okay, Susie, I found your question. I'm not deliberately missed. I've just missed it. Um, Susie says, question, question, question. Will there be texturing? Oh, of course, Susie. Will there be burning? Oh, sounds interesting, doesn't it? Possibly. Uh, and will there be colouring? So that's three questions, Susie, all at once. Yeah, you're just being greedy now, Susie. Come back ten minutes later and ask another one. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, Brian, it was with uh, reference to my recent live, he says. Oh, yeah. Hmm. That was the stem of a said goblet that Mark was telling It went really well, right to the very end, and then it escaped from the lathe. Oops. It happens. Right, so got a tenon on the end there. So what we'll do is we'll take out the step centres, and get it into 
the live. You, you're welcome, Susie. Good evening, Paul Cameron. Good evening, Paul. How are you? And Roy the boy says, question, question. Plum, please. <laughs> him and his plum. He's, he's got plum on the brain, hasn't he? Oh, man. And, all he uh, kept Simon... saying when I, when I was doing a demo at Ely, all he kept saying is plum, plum, yeah. plum. Simon from Flay Coast says, twist his stem. Question mark. Funny you should say that. I mm -hmm. see... Funny you say that. I see. Uh, I did a demo for Beatley or Norwich Woodturners um, June, July time this year, and mm -hmm. I was talking to a gentleman about a texturing tool. Uh, he's never he never seen one. He never knew how they worked or whatever. Anyway, he went away and bought the Robert Sorby uh, wheel like this, mm -hmm. and he made his own handle because he was an engineer. And when I went back there in November with Barry, when Barry did his demo there, he'd actually done a gobbler, and the actual, f f the stem, he'd actually textured out with this to make it look like a spiral stem. Yep. So I'm going to have a go at it. What we so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a part in line here, roughly where my yeah, foot's going to go. Colin from Wood Wizardry has just said, what question, what's the best way for sharpening the Sorby thin parting tool? Uh, only sharpen the. I only sh is he on about this one? The little, are you on about this I'm one? Not, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at you. Are you on about that one, Colin? If you are, I only ever sharpen one side, so I'll do that one yeah. half half a dozen times, and I'll do the top one half a dozen times. I only yeah. ever sharpen. I only ever sharpen the bottom to raise the bar at the top. Yeah. Those are cuts. That's why I do. Um, what we're looking for, part tool. Let's clean this end up here. We'll just clean this end up here. Uh, Ruby has just said. <laughs> Susie, I'll read Ruby's comment in a minute because Susie has just said some plum. With... Oh, I've just jumped again. Stop jumping. Some plum with some burning and some gold might look nice, uh, and gold leaf and gold leaf on the inside. Oh, don't really? Want much the Susie woman, uh, does she? I mean, we'll just be here uh, till eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, Ruby, <laughs> Ruby's just been a, I can't believe this. As of today, I can say that I've heard it all. A local school is being sued for discrimination. A student identified himself as a feline. But the but the board refused to install litter boxes in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> so they're being sued because they can't go to a litter box. I know what needs to happen to that boy. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Jared the Fresh Turner. Instead of doing again the old the old goblet, why don't you do the Bordeaux or Burgundy or a scal or cognac glass? It's, it's scal I can't even say that, Jared. I don't do French. All right, what am I looking for? But I get your idea. He oh, wants a different shape of of uh, of gobbler. Have you got a, Have you got a shape in mind yet? Um, well, considering that this project was weren't a re alive within about ten minutes ago. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. <yeah. laughs> uh, can Can Steve do one of those knotted stems like Andy P does? No, we have we have lots of time. <laughs> Who's that from? <laughs> Lewis, the Klondike craftsman. Lewis, I think you need to get back to your tissues, mate. Yeah, I, I think so. Yes, I think you need to be going to do some work there, Lewis. <laughs> I can't believe that a school's being sued because they wouldn't put letter boxes in. The world has gone mad. Right, the boy says, question, question. See, plum is the answer. Uh, Apparently, plum is the new 42. Is that right? <laughs> Andrew from AJK Woodworks is in. Hi, Andrew. Hi, How Andrew. are you? Sharpen this up. I'm, I must have missed him earlier. <laughs> Andy, Andy Woodwork Leather says, if the answer is you're timed out, what is the question? <laughs> hmm. 
Uh, I think I'll let you answer that, Andy. <laughs> the whole chat has gone mad about plums now. Apparently, uh, a plum is a person and not an answer. Okay. I think they're taking the, uh, the silly question thing to another level tonight. I think they have, yeah. I'm just going to start ignoring them now. <laughs> well, I've been ignoring people anyway, so it's not bad. That's fair. <coughs> Chapman says it's ridiculous, Ruby. It's not like letter boxes take up much space. <laughs> I, I, I have the vision of them going to the toilet in the letter box, <clears throat> and then covering it up. The uh, the world is going crazy. I tell you, Terry. Terry says he's got to go now. The food is here. Enjoy, oh. enjoy your dinner, Terry. This is a. This is a. A quiz night is that with, with, with dinner included. Lovely. Turns nice. So I'm thinking just a general curve into the bottom of that. Actually I might put a little rim on that for a change. So Because we know like Brian likes his rolled top edges. Yeah, I do. Rolled edges are nice. Um, so we'll just take that down to that thickness. Andy, G Andy Gibb has just joined us. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. How are you? Uh, we're all well, as far as I can work out in the chat. Apart from one poor soul who's feeling a bit poorly. And Lewis was feeling a bit poorly earlier too, but I think most of us are okay. All right, Mark now... One boy says, I'm getting a rescue collie shortly. Just waiting on, <laughs> just waiting to go to the vet to have his plums removed. <laughs> well, <laughs> Rob from Clingsville says, don't say barbecue or Mark gets mad. Must be an in joke there somewhere. What's a nice roll top. Bead on the rim. Is that a three eighths bowl gouge you're using on that? No, it's a three eighths bowl gouge. Not that. God, I'm getting good at that. Hey? I'm getting good at that. I can't even recognise tools. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just refine that up just a little bit. Wood turning by Barry says it's cutting like sycamore, Steve. Is it? Mm, that's what he says. Okay. I'd like say it didn't have any name on it. But no doubt Michael told me what it was when I bought it. But I've slept since then, so 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 so, so why didn't you just uh Mark says I've just had a pizza. You can talk about barbecue all you like. Okay. And uh, we had pizza for tea last night. We had chicken korma this evening. Right. So I'm going to get my baby spindle gouge and just round this over a little bit. Andy has said, uh, true story, there's an outcry in America that some schools are providing litter box for kids, identifying as feline. It's a political ploy by one of the parties. <laughs> Gary Glass has said it may be sick of war, but, uh, but it identifies as oak. <laughs> Let's not start all that here, guys. Jeez. That is a torture, that. All right, so a nice little rolled edge on there. Lovely. So before I go anywhere near the stem, I'm going to hollow the middle out. So we'll and, take that. Uh, Mark, Mark says it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Sycamore, Steve. I was there when you bought them. He was, Mark. There you go. So, um, I'm going to make sure the chuck is tight. So, either Mark's memory is better than yours, or he hasn't slept since. 
<laughs> I have a few more things on my mind and a bit of wood. That's for sure. You do that, do you? Right, so I'm going to use a bowl gouge. No, I'm not. I'm going to use a spindle gouge on this. And I'm going to back hollow it. Rough hollow it out. Change camera so you can see. Uh, let's try that one. I'll just swing that round a little bit. Like that. So what I'm using is I'm using a spindle gouge to back hollow this. So... You know, because it's on end grain. Go change the camera. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was looking in the wrong place. You're okay. Takes a while to get to YouTube. There's about a 20 second delay between the picture I see on, on my left hand screen and the picture that's on my right hand screen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a bit of a delay. There is a big delay today. All right, so let's go to that one. That's better. So like I said, we're just going to back all of this out. You can actually use this as a drill bit to run through if we want to. But I'm just going to gently... <laughs> Mark says, Michael only has sycamore in that size spindle. It's not hard to remember when you buy wood from him every couple of weeks. <laughs> That's fair enough, Mark. <laughs> Rob from Clingsport says, so if I, de if I declare myself a goldfish, yeah. will stay provide a bowl uh, and a nice diver <laughs> that shoots bubbles out? Uh, uh, Sometimes I think I've got the memory of a goldfish. Now, there's a whole debate about that now. There's, there's been some, somebody has done a study, some university persons has done a study and, and goldfish do have memories after all, apparently. Don't know how they find that out, but hey ho. No, oh, well, there was a whole thing on, on, on a television programme about it. Kevin 9K says, Brian, I've stopped the laptop for the TV to catch up. Nicely in sync now. Good stuff. Hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm in uh, Steve's workshop on Skype, which is instant. Hmm. And then going out to you guys is about 20 seconds behind. Uh, Colin says it looks easy to turn and he's not turned sycamore. Well, if you haven't turned sycamore, Colin, I suggest you get some because it's a lovely route to turn. It Fair is nice. It does turn nice. It it's does. Like, it's I like anything you've seen. You... Go ahead, man. Like any... Would you just make sure your tools are sharp and it makes life easier. Mm hmm. Joe Senior just joined us. Hi, Joe. Yeah, Alan Gibbs just put a statement there and he's 100% right. The world has gone mad. <laughs> You're 100% right. It's going completely bonkers. No, oh. oh. uh, Andy the Woodwork Lennon says, I saw that a few years ago about the goldfish. That's if you need reminding. What? Sorry? What did you say there, Andy? So I'm going to swap that to the Simon Hope, I think. <laughs> I can hear Michelle laughing in the background. I have no idea what she's laughing at, but I can hear the laughing from the sitting room. <laughs> so I don't know whether we'll see, whether I'll be in the way, but we'll try it. Uh, well, Joe Senior has said, question, question, not a bowl. Not a bowl, Joe. Well, well as a bowl, really, it's a small bowl on the end of a stick. Commonly known as a goblet. And Rob from Kingsport says, question, question, when does a cup, a bleak mug, become a goblet? Is it because of the length of the stem? Hmm. If it finishes off with a stem on it, it's a goblet. If you break the stem <laughs> off, it's a mug. <laughs> or a cup. Depending on the shape. If it's got straight sides, it's a mug. If it's got curved sides, it's a cup. <laughs> I have no idea how you, how you would uh, 
to find that. The Yorkshire gets in. Good evening. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Richard Benton's in. Stand oh, by does. your bed. So this is this Simon Hope cutter <laughs> is an actual cutter, not a carbide scraper, because it's got the cupped got the cupped um, cutter on it. Yeah. Cutter on it. Mm -hmm. If it was just a flat uh, blade like this, then it'd be a scraper. So, uh, so I from. <clears throat> I've got a, a question from Andy. He says he's asking again. I must have missed it again. Go to the foot of my stairs, says Joe. <laughs> why is a spindle gauge? Uh, why does a spindle gauge work better than a bowl gauge for backhauling? You don't want to use a bowl gouge in a um, on spindle work backhauling. The wing is too close. We'll end up catching the wing. Right. It's usually it's, it's probably more to do with the depth of the flute and the shape of the wing, the spindle gauge is, is better designed for bike hollowing. I'm sure you could bike hollow with a with a bull gauge if you felt the need, but well, we do on bowls. Gauge, we do on bowls. Yes, yeah, I know, but that's a big opening. If you're going to a small opening, it's uh, the spindle gauge works works adequately well. So why not use it? Um, Ruby might give us a definitive answer on that. If you look, if you look at a spindle gauge. Let me go back on this camera. Right, so if you look on the spindle gouge, can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you look at the spindle gouge to the bowl gouge, look how much deeper the flute is and the wing is a lot higher and a lot steeper. With the spindle gouge, the wing is a lot more swooped back. So you've got less chance of catching a wing on a spindle gouge than you have a bowl gouge. When you get a catch, that's when you catch the wing. And uh, that's... A pretty aggressive catch if you get that on a on a small area. Yeah. So. so Ruby Ruby has explained it quite eloquently there. She says, "I think it's because the shallow flute and the angle of the grind yeah. are roughly the same as a drill bit on a yeah. on a spindle gauge." There you go. There you go. Ben <laughs> gentleman says, "I'm doing a Terry." I have a selection of cheese biscuits and lots of little bits. Now, uh, you enjoy that, man. I hope it's tasty. Rob from Coppola Wood Turning is in. I must have missed him earlier, too. Hi, Rob. Good evening, Rob. Put a light on so I can see. Um, Gary Glass has just said, uh, sorry for being a bit of a plum, Steve. <laughs> Can you show us the difference in those cutters again, please? Yes, mate. Of course Wait I can. Right, so. Spindle gouge is a shallow flute. Bowl gouge has got a deeper flute, as you can see. The bowl gouge is nearly twice as deep as the spindle gouge. And the, the flute on the spindle gouge is wider as well, as you can see. And the reason being is obviously you, you, the flute walls, or the, sorry, the the wings are not as high as they are on the bowl gouge. You mean we do back hollow with the gouge, a bowl gouge on bowls, but obviously you've got a lot of room to move it about. If you was to get that inside and catch out, that's just going to rip that out of the lathe. So. All right, so I'm just curving the bottom of this to. Okay, so Rob, uh, uh, Rob from, um, King Explorer Jesus says, as someone who's trying to learn, why does it always seem people use carbides when hollowing out? Uh, so Steve started this with a with a uh, spindle gauge, and then he went to his uh, Simon Hope cup cutter, which is a carbide, but it's a cutting carbide, not a scraper. To get right down there with a with a spindle gauge, you struggle. And with the carbides, the uh, Simon Hope cutter, you got a little bit more control with it. And uh, that six, that Joe has just mentioned that it's a, it's a, a the Simon Hope little six mil cutter, and any of those little carbide cutters are quite aggressive. Yeah, and they, they do get rid of um, excess wood a whole lot quicker. 
It's a personal choice thing again. If you want to hollow it, I mean, some people would just, just draw this out with a fastener bit and then finish it off with a like a carbide or a scraper even. There's always more than one way to skin a cat. Oh, I better not say that. Not all the cat litter boxes about anyway. No, that's what I was thinking. I might upset somebody. Right, so I'm not going to go no deeper now. I'm just going to wide now because it's quite fixed at the moment. So we're just going to take... We get a little bit thinner. A bit, bit more petite is the word I was going to go. Petite? Mm. Fair enough. The small, Lewis has just uh, added a comment. He says the small cutting surface makes him less apt to catch on a more rigid shank. It has a more rigid shank on it. So easier to control, less flexing and flexing in the shaft. Yeah. So Steve's cutting there both on the pull, the pull and the push stroke. Um, Steve was that metric measurement there. Says Alan's kept. Mm. <laughs> and Colin from Wood Wizardry says you can't beat a number one holler. Well, only when Dewey's in the chat. Kevin 9K Creation says, Brian, I think he wanted to see the carbides side by side. Oh, okay, well, let's have a look at the carbides then. Hang on one second. And Kev wants to see them as well. Roger Ken has just joined us. Good evening, Roger. Carbides, right. Okay, so this I'll show you on a 8 mil. Difference because, with, between because, a scraper and a cutter. Yeah, because that's you can't be right. So this is a, just a standard, just a standard normal scraper carbide scraper this is the simon hope scraper or cutter and as you can see it's a cupped cutter so rather okay. than being flat all the way across it's got like a little shoulder on it which is a cutting edge and it's Pinched. razor sharp usually yeah they are razor you must sharp. get them they're really sharp yeah they are sharp. don't be rubbing your finger on it or and what you can finger. and what you can do is every now and again you just rotate it to give you a new cutting edge um, that's now getting to a stage where that could do with being rotated, but everywhere else is razor sharp, like Brian said. But these are a scraper. That is a cutter. Yep. The difference between that and a negative rake is it the negative rake would have a slight angle turned on the top to give you a, a, a slight chamfer on the top, so it's not so aggressive to put in. But if you use that, that's basically like using a scraper in the bottom there, so you get quite a bit of tear out. So Brian with the Y says, he's question, question, I've only got a homemade carbide holder, which would it be possible to fit a cupped carbide tip in place of a standard carbide tip? Mm. The answer to that question is, if the screw fits and there's enough room for it to go on it, it possibly would. There's only one way to find out, that's to try it. But if you look at Steve's, the, the, uh, the end uh, for the cupped cutters is usually recessed in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't just sit proud on the on the bar. There's usually a bit of a recess in them. Hey, my, my carbides are like that as well. Well, Wilson says, howdy again from the west coast of Arizona. The TV oh, people just left. So he's, <laughs> so he's got his TV buying stuff now. It's good. Lewis is saying that uh, negative rake doesn't give the best finish in wood, but it's perfect for resin. Yeah, totally agree. So it's a little bit thick in the bottom there. So just take a little bit more at the bottom. If, you, if you're unsure of how to fix the carbide cutter onto the, the piece of steel, just have a look at some of them. I mean, have a look at the pictures on the on the websites and, and places and have a look and see how they're attached. 
Um, and then have a go yourself if you want to make your own tools. And Louis says it's very hard to get a catch with a negative rake. It is. Uh, yeah, it's it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot more forgiving than a straight edge, for sure. Uh, has anyone used a carbide scraper at 45 degree angle uh, in the outside of wood instead of horizontal? Well, that uh, acts like a negative rake. Yeah. Can it act like a shear scraper or? If you're doing that, basically just turn it into a negative rake scraper. Alan Gibbs says, Steve, am I right in saying that the Simon Hope is set at 45 degrees when it's flat on the rest? Uh, uh, no, I don't think no, it is. 20, 25, I'd say. I think 45 is a bit, would be a bit far, maybe. And Mark L says, negative rake for resin really works well. It does indeed. Lewis has just said, some people like a thick bottom, Steve. <laughs> and uh, Lewis just said, did your piece move in the chuck just then? There seems to be a little bit of a wobble. I don't think so. No, I don't think. I can't see the wobble, but Lewis has got better eyes than me, maybe. I don't think it did move, but I will just double check. Make sure yep. it's tight. That went a little bit eccentric when I um, started turning the middle out. But what I'll do is I'll just reshape the top. Once I get the thickness I want, I'll just run a gouge over and just gently reshape the... Uh, Rob says a question. With carbide tools, are you locked into buying the tips from whoever made the tools? Or are they a standard size, so they all uh, tips for all tools? I can't really answer that, but I know that the company that I did the review for, their, uh, all their cutters um, are the same fitting as Easy Wood Tools, for example. But there are lots of tool manufacturers out there who have different sizes of screws and uh, sizes of cutters. You kind of just have to pay your money and take your chances there, I think. My carbides, I buy the cutters in packs of 10 online. I don't buy them from mm. the manufacturer. There you go. But it's, you, you need to measure the you need to measure them and then Google them and see what you can find. Correct. Tim from TF Turnings in. Hi, Hi Tim. Kevin AK Crazy says, no, not standard. I got some too small of Evil Bay. <laughs> Evil Bay. Ooh. That's the problem. Some of those eBay things don't actually give you the correct sizes and stuff, or don't actually, some, to some things, they don't even give you the sizes at all. No. Right. So that's where I'm going to be with that. So let's just quickly clean that out and sand that up inside. Yeah. Ben Jarman says, I've used negative rate scrapers a lot. And I think they give a really good finish. They agree, they do. Uh, but they last for seconds rather than minutes. Yeah, because you're relying on the on the burr that's that's kicked up when you sharpen it to uh, to do the cutting for you. Yeah, once that burr's gone, you can sharpen carbide tips. Um, if you got can, a, yeah. if you got a diamond stone, uh, around about I don't know. 300, 400 grit, something like that. 400 or 600 grit, you yeah. they a little diamond um, cards on. I've, I use one for when I'm honing and when I'm sharpening my router bits when I'm at work. So oh, if yeah. you just put some lapping fluid on it and just gently rub the, the carbide bit up and down, it will just put that burr back on and give it a nice sharp edge. So Mark L has said that there are some people who make interchangeable cutters for various brands. Arizona Carbide has a broad selection. I haven't tried them yet, but plenty in the future. Never heard of them. 320. No, nope, neither have I, no. 400, 320, right. Get all my grits out. So Rob from Sport has said, a question, um, so if it's a goblet and you want to actually drink from it, 
how would you seal it? <coughs> Depends if you want to drink it. Yeah. But uh, if you want to drink alcohol out of it, I would suggest that you do it with. Uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of the stuff now. It's just popped right in my head. Plastic coat. Plastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bruston's plastic coat. That's it. Which is a, like a two-part epoxy, which yes. was designed for use on furniture. Or did the sink and used it, on the sink? Yep. It, it produces a nice finish on it, and uh, it's it's uh, alcohol and acid-proof. Would you believe? TF TF Tony says, "Give us a wave, Brian." <laughs> okay. Yeah, Andy says, I sharpen my carbide tips on a diamond stone. Strong magnet gives something to hold on to. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, Malcolm Douglas says, they never uh, sealed goblets years ago. Just drank out them. Or as long as it's not you. Well, you'd be pretty silly if you're making a you goblet to drink out of. <laughs> I bet say. someone has. <laughs> I'm sure they have. But... I'd have to ask some of the more experienced people in the chat, is there a wood that, you, that would be best to use for a goblet if you were going to use it for drink out of, without sealing it? Then they used to seal it with, with milk at one time. I heard something. Yeah, Mark Ellis just come back and said that the Arizona Carbides is a small company, but he's heard very good things about them. All right. There are lots of carbide makers. Producers. That uh, company that I did the uh, Find by Tool, they were called. That's the name of the company. Obviously, Chinese with a name like Find by Tool. Oh, God. They, they, that, that was their uh, initial thing that they started was making carbide cutters. So they've got a huge selection of carbide cutters, and they tell you on the, on their website they actually tell you which carbide, which tools to fit. What like other manufacturers or? Yeah, they do. Yeah. I mean, to say things like that, that this carbide cutter will fit the the uh, Easywood C1 or whatever the, whatever Easywood numbers are, uh, they are listed on it right. on their website. Richard Feelings joined us. He Thank says, you, "I Richard. have a I know whiskey tumbler that is that is unsealed. Never had a problem with it." Well, they store whiskey in oak, don't they? Oak caskets. Exactly. No, you won't have any problem. With it. Uh, Rob says, Rob, this is for Rob from Clingsport, he says, Steve, do you prefer net abrasive strips over normal paper or cloth back? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. The reason being is you don't get the score marks in it. And also, um, it lasts longer. The only thing that really, with sandpaper, is obviously it builds up and then you you, you have to keep taking off and it just gets clogged up. With this, the dust comes through it, and the only way you really destroy this is by sanding and getting it too hot. If you don't overheat your sandpaper or the abronet, it will last absolutely ages. And Colin reckons that lignum vitae would be a good wood, good wood for a goblet because it's so dense. Can't argue with that. I wouldn't... Uh... So last one, 400 grit. Uh, uh, Rob says he'll arrange some samples for you, Steve. Oh, thank you, Rob. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'm choking now. Send me a link. Wood was if I call it. Send me a link. Link for what? Uh, I think it's all about the cardboard you reviews. All right, okay. Oh, could be. Uh, I'll see you're going to find it for you now. Right. 
Right, so that's the inside sanded up. I should just tell you to go back and look it up on my uh, on my uh, carbide tool review, shouldn't I? Really, <laughs> <laughs> just to get another view, you know. And Colin, it's right at the end. <laughs> yeah, it was right at the very end. <laughs> yeah, watch the whole thing. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refine this a little bit because we've got a little bit of a wobble on there. So I'm just going to use a small uh, spindle gouge, and we're just going to refine that. There's the link there to the findbytool.com. Uh, Rob, uh, yes, I'm on uh, Facebook under my my name, Brian J. Usby, or as Hardwood Turning. Of course I am, Rob. I'm everywhere. I'm on Instagram and everything. Twitter, the whole shooting match. He's a Facebook whore, he is. Yeah, absolutely. Just a turd. Uh, Lucy says, Lucy Monday Row, or just Lucy, uh, I said, I recognise your accent, Steve, but I can't quite place it. Really? He's from Outer, he's from outer Mongolia, Lucy. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Norfolk. <laughs> ben Jarman says, I think that net abrasive sandpaper is a bit of a con job. You get less bits of sand <laughs> per square inch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nice one, Rob. Nice one, Ben. All right, so we're just going to gently roll this. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. <laughs> You're a star, Rob. Uh, Roy the boy says, Brian, that mallet I made was sticky every time I cut it. Oh, yeah, was that the... Uh... The lignum vitae bowl that you turned into mullet, Roy. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Lucy just said normal for Norfolk. <laughs> oh. oh, apparently net abrasive is going to be in short supply next year, according to Rob. Oh, wow. Why is that then, Rob? Is there a reason why? Or run net sand or what? <laughs> run net sand. <laughs> run net net. Right, so it's nice there. It's a lot that. Lucy says her husband is really from Beckles. B oh, yeah. C C L E S is that Beckles? Yeah, it's on the Norfolk, Suffolk. Yeah, North Suffolk. Roy the boy said yes, that was it. Uh, Roy the bevel, Steve, you'll be all right. Yeah, you will. Uh, just engage the bevel. Anchor bevel cut, Steve. Come on, get a grip. <laughs> and net abrasive is great for sanding rough skin too, apparently, says Colin. <laughs> too much information. Pete from Twisted Trees is in. Hi, Pete. How you doing? Uh, the abrasive is available... As it is the Velcro bike, but the hole, but the holes are too hard to get. <laughs> I'm having trouble finding holes on the feet. <laughs> Jesus. Lionel's in. Good evening, Lionel. Hi, right, Lionel. How are you doing? We have got 89 people watching, Steve, and you've wow. been going for 55 minutes. Thank you, everybody, for coming over and joining us. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Get rid of some of this. I'm going to use the spindle rough and gouge just to get rid of some of that. <coughs> Apparently, Suffolk is way better than Norfolk. Is it? Why is that? That's according to Ben Jarman. It's because Ben lives in Suffolk, I would imagine. I would think that would be the case. Oh, really nice, this is. Mm. Can we go to the overhead camera? Look at those shavings. Look at them. They're pretty. Oh, here we go. He says, uh, Rob says, the nylon net is used mainly in the wooden turbine sector. And, uh, and they use a massive amount so they control the market. Oh, wow. And because of the energy crisis, everybody wants wind turbines. Ah. And Stephen, the wood dude has just joined us. Hi, Stephen. 
You mean because of the profiteering on the energy market? Is that what you mean? Yeah, profiteering, yeah. There is a huge amount of profiteering going on when you look at the price of oil. Lewis has just reminded people to hit the thumbs up button. Thank you, Lewis. Yep. We'd be appreciated if you would, guys. I don't want to refresh my page, but my page currently says there are 33 thumbs up and 87 people watching. I don't believe that's right, though. Right. So if you haven't given it a thumbs up, do so now. Go. So we're just gently remove some of this. Some of the bulk material. Or waste. Whatever you wish to call it. I'm just going to nibble some of this away so we can get the top finished. Good and man, then... Andy. Andy. Andy says he's just hit the thumbs up button twice. Thanks, Andy. You're a star. Well, do, it a third, do, it, do it a third time, just to, just because the third time's a charm, you know what I mean. And the wood dude says, hi, everyone. What's everyone making this weekend? Uh, well, I'm going to be working on my latest little um, concept bowl dish thing that I'm currently working on this weekend. And then I'm going to be making a goblet on Monday night as part of the wood turning Zoom club December challenge. Are we, are, 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 we, uh, are we announcing the uh, hashtag week this Sunday? We are. We are indeed. Oh, well, that reminds me. We might have to make a kind of special goblet then, won't we? Special. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Lewis just said, that's small enough, Steve. We've seen too many broken stems. <laughs> That wasn't a little dig at Mark Mutar, was it? Or even, or even Mike at the Walt. Not the Goblet King, Mr. Walt. <laughs> and Andy, the Valley Wood Turner, who is the other half of uh, Lucy, says, Hi, all finally got the kids settled. <laughs> You've been reading them bedtime stories there, Andy. Mm -hmm. should, the best times you should have just sat them down and watched this, they'd have been asleep in five minutes. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> They are the best times with kids when you can sit down with them at night and just read them a book or something. Exactly. Fabulous. When they're teenagers like mine, they don't want to know you. Well, unless they want money. <laughs> or they want taken somewhere. I, th I think uh, the Yorkshire gets plan for this week is getting himself drunk. No. <laughs> no shock. Hmm. Paul Cameron says, I'm going to make a mess, I think. Paul, are you going to somebody else's workshop? Because you'll never know if you make a mess on your own. Oh, Ben Jarman says that. <clears throat> By the way, technically you need to hit it four times. As people from Norfolk have more than two thumbs. Oops. <laughs> Is anybody doing anything exciting this weekend? Anything that's uh, out no. of the ordinary? No. Not just the norm. I'm busy tomorrow. I've got a horse that's not very well, so he's in the stables, so I have to spend a bit more time doing him. Twice a day visits and give him some medicine. Uh, Susie Swift Donner says, uh, Stephen, in Switzerland, the Christmas markets are mostly outdoors, and Sunday it will be zero degrees to set up at five in the morning, and then later it will be four degrees. <laughs> um, stay in the house, Susie. Thanks, all the same. Just going to check that. I don't know if I can get a little more. Ward Wilson has just said, have them listen to Mike Walt reviewing a product. <laughs> They'll be out like a light. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's terrible. It's a bit harsh. 
of the wood, it says, Brian, I might be making some YouTube videos in the new year. Oh. Now, that's not before time, Stephen. Uh, because your stuff is amazing and we would like to see it. Yeah. Sore throat. Paul Cameron says, Sore throat is he a little horse. Okay, Paul, very good. Richard Fielding says he has two markets this weekend. Oh, gearing up for the Christmas market season, Richard. Good for you. Got lots of stock made. Bob says he's picking up his youngsters, young, young, youngest, I can nearly talk, picking up his youngest uh, from uni, uni for Christmas. Can't wait to see her again. Oh, excellent. Home for Christmas. It'll be okay for the first couple of days and then she'll turn into a nightmare again. <laughs> You'll be like, when are you going back? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Ben Jarman says, does she get free sandpaper, Rob? <laughs> now, are you trying to say that uh, Rob's daughter's a bit of brazen? <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. Wood dude said, Saturday, demo at Axminster. Hi, welcome. All welcome. Oh, very good. So, Alex, Mr. High Wickham, if you're in that area, never cross. All right, I'm going to send. Oh, actually, I might go a bit thinner with that. No, because I was going to try and spiral that one, I? so I don't want to be too thin. You were a bit, yeah. So, I'm going to put a bit of a, a bead in there then. <laughs> uh, Lucy says, uh, What days are you at that? <laughs> what days are you there, Rob? I don't need much of an excuse to go to Yandles. Uh, nobody does, Lucy. <laughs> it's just it's a bit far from here, unfortunately. <clears throat> Kev at 9K Creations is, is causing a bit of an upset. He's actually saying captive ring, captive ring, captive ring. Just put him on time out, will you? I think I will if he says it again. <laughs> Ward Bolton says, called my vet to have the horse's teeth floated. That means rasped, by the way. And she can't see her until next March. She's so busy. Wow. That's uh, it's a long wait to get the teeth floated. Mind you, if they're on hay at this time of year, Ward, they shouldn't need it, really. Should be able to. I find that they don't need their teeth floated as so much in the winter when they're, when they're actually chewing the hay. Can't you just give them a brick to chew? Hmm? Yeah, give them a brick, yeah. That's not going to work. During the summer, they might sometimes need their teeth floated a wee bit because they get sharp edges because they're not really using their teeth as they should. Well, because they're eating uh, grass. They're eating, or... Yeah, so they're eating short grass, basically, and they don't have to chew it the same. Uh, horses are designed to grind their food at the back of their mouth with great big teeth, and that's the teeth that get sharp edges on them. Right, right so... Wood said, says, just say no to captive rings. Woodward Leonard says two captive rings. Who started this captive ring nonsense? Whoever says captive ring, just put him on timeout. Okay, mate. Useless item. Captive ring. Oh, Lucy says, does that include the weekends, Rob? <laughs> if not, Andy may take a day off. Oh, so last now. week of January. Uh, so Rob's there last week of January. What, Yandles? Yep. Is that Robert Kingspool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Alan Gibbs says he's go heading over to Germany to bring back bring uh, my son and dog back to Scotland for Christmas. Uh, taxis, train, ferries, taxi, and then home to Stirling. Wow. Trains, planes and automobiles there, Alan. <laughs> Alan Lewis says, the things you can learn in the Goblet video. Indeed. Uh -huh. Oops. Gary Glass has said, Cameroon have just taken the lead against Brazil. <laughs> Won't be interesting if they beat Brazil. Oh, 
Oh, Robin says we are making five videos about basic abrasives for wood turning. Oh, very good, Rob. Look forward to seeing those. If you need somebody to help make your videos, I'll, uh, I'll happily volunteer. <laughs> Kevin Nike says this is nearly as much fun as the Battle of the Makers. Uh -huh. don't, don't mention Battle of the Makers. Stop it. Nothing of course, uh, uh, myself and Joe would be in an, 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 an unassailable lead. Being three up and one to play. <gasps> Champions. Said that for uh, Joe's benefit. She's a bit competitive. Taking part of the counts. Ben Jowen says, Brian, why do horses need their hoofs cut? And what harms to wild horses? Well, here's the thing, Ben. Horses are designed, um, have been designed by nature over millions of years to wear their own feet. Um, it's only since humans got involved with them that uh, they keep them in, on soft ground and in stables so their feet grow exponentially without being able to wear themselves away. So that's why they need trimmed. And the worst thing we do, obviously, is stick metal shoes in the bottom so the feet don't wear at all. So they're just growing and pushing the metal. They're trying to push that metal shoe off, which is nailed on. Which is, Can you imagine how that would feel? Yes. Um, so <clears throat> that's why the farrier has to come, pull the shoe off, trim the foot back and stick the shoe back on again. Kind of pointless. My horses are never shod. I don't shoe mine. They... Uh, I do have to trim them because we haven't got hard ground here. Uh, we just shoot it's farmland, so it's kind of soft. Except in the summer when it dries out. But in, in places like America and um, where horses are kept naturally, or more naturally, um, they, uh, they're on hard ground. They wear their own feet. If you look at the American Mustangs, their feet are perfect. And it's all done by nature. They can do it themselves. Don't get me started on horses, guys. Now, what's Steve doing? I'm practicing. We're sanding, sanding the cup. Sanding me goblet. Jared, the French turner says, sorry, I have to go early morning. Lots of Christmas shoppers. Breakfast. Uh, need to hit the sack early. We did 110 breakies this morning. Pfft, wow. Well done. See you all soon. Same place, same time. Good night all. See you later, Gerald. Thank Thanks for coming in, buddy. Your company is appreciated. What did Lewis just say there? I missed something. Lewis. Yeah, I cannot understand the hype of the World Cup. It's in the middle of the hockey season. Yeah, I know. It's totally out of... Uh, it's just totally out of sync because they've had to do it in the desert. Because somebody had got a great big fat brown envelope handed to them. Ooh. Did I see that outline? <laughs> apparently them envelopes make the world go round. They do, apparently, yeah. You didn't let go of the sandpaper then, did you? Did, did you drop the sandpaper? Yeah. I must have, because I'm trying to read the chat. It's not like Steve to drop something, of course. I nearly went down the extractor. Oh, no, even worse. I have to go and recover it. But I managed to save it. They got stuck on the earth yeah. wire. And Brian, uh, Brian with a Y says, is it just the lighting or does the Abernet remove a lot of wood? It, it does remove a lot of wood. It does. And uh, you can see it because it actually goes through the, the gaps in the, the mesh. Right, so... That up to there is all sanded up to 400 grit. So what we'll do now is we'll move down here and create our stem mm -hmm. and uh, the foot. So we'll just remove some of this. Speed the wave up a little bit. So Rob has just said the market for cow and horse maintenance is massive. Um, yeah... There's not so much. There's not so much, uh, or not so many people here using abrasives for um, trimming horses' feet. <laughs> but I did have one guy arrived here to, to trim my horse's feet, and he used a four-inch angle grinder. 
with a, an 80 grip flap disc on it. And it actually did it very, very quickly and very um, easily, but there's a whole lot of horses would not uh, be, take kindly to a four inch angle grinder <laughs> being rubbed on their feet. But you could do it with my horses because they're well, really well trained. The Yorkshire Grit has mentioned the captive ring again. Stop it. And Kevin 9K says at slow speed, Abernet lasts forever. It does. Well, that's good. See, I have some. I have. I had a little sample pack. Of, I can't remember where I got it. Tiny tunnel or somewhere. The only thing I and find I just, that I just couldn't get on with. Abernet is the heat. Obviously, it wears right. out like anything, but yeah. But if you look after it, so I'll be interested to have another try at it. And Brian says, uh, Colin, he, uh, he says, Colin, I saw it in a local DIY store here at five euros a sheet. What's that, Abra, now? Hmm. <laughs> Lou, Lou said that would smell bad, Brian. Yeah, if you, if you did it hard enough, it would burn. It would it smell terrible. What's well, here, isn't it? Yep, Kevin 9K says, angle grinder farriers are all over Facebook, including Vets, Brian. You're absolutely right. That everybody's, They're all kind of starting to get... Um, rather than using a rasp, the traditional method of using a rasp. It's all about speed yeah. nowadays. Yeah, it's all about getting the job done in a hurry. And you see them now with, with cows and stuff, they're actually putting them in a crate and turning them upside down so they don't have to bend over. How can that be good for a cow? Oh, talk about stress. I know, but they do it all the time. They do it with, they do it with goats and sheep and everything. Stick them in a crate, turn them upside down, grind off their feet, and away you go. I must stress the animal out. Kevin 9K, K, 9K says, you sound too fast for rubber net, Brian. Uh, yeah, probably, Kev. So you slowed the speed away down somewhere. I've never seen any instructions on how to use rubber net anywhere. Brian's a bit of an animal. Um, a bit, yeah. Uh, a bit heavy-handed sometimes. Particularly with... Uh, Belgian waxes, dare I say. <laughs> <laughs> let's not mention, let's not mention waxes. Let's not, yeah, let's not go there. Oh, right, so, so uh, there's Rob explaining there. He says, net products are nylon, so you need to run them about half the speed of normal braces. Uh, well, there's the problem right away then. Hmm. Paul Calvin says, flipping the estate before it's a stake. Eh? Or flipping the estate before it's a mistake. No, I think he's all about turning the cows upside down. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> flipping the stake. <laughs> uh, before it's a stake, yeah. All right, so let's quickly just sand this up. And then we'll look at getting some texture on it. So, um, Brian with the Y says, question for you, Steve. What is the ratio of the size of the base of the goblet to the bowl diameter? Goblet diameter. So basically, uh, in my humble opinion, the foot should be slightly smaller yep. than the size, of the widest part of the cup of the goblet. I normally try and get it about a third under the size of the head of the goblet. A third under? third under. Hmm. So that's two thirds of the size of the head. Kev says, uh, depends what you drink, Brian. True. And Andy the Woodward Learner says, it's not the same wax you use for your legs, Brian. I don't use wax for my legs, Andy. I get Michelle to shave them for me. <laughs> <laughs> Rob says, the nylon melts and covers your bravest so you don't get any friction anymore. And then more heat. Just ruins it. It does. Susie has said, my favourite abrasive is Abernet, but it's extremely expensive over here, therefore I only use it on special items. I don't know what, a price, what price is it here. Is it expensive here, guys? Well, I, get it, I got it from Harrogate, and it was £5 for 10 sheets of each grip. 
So I don't think it's expensive for what it is. Okay. Gary Glass says, okay, folks, it's just reaching the witching hour here and I have an early start tomorrow. See you later. looking great, Steve. We'll catch the rest tomorrow. Night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Robert Brookwood says, Brian, TMI. TMI. And he says Michelle has a four-inch angle grinder too, Brian. <laughs> mm. I'm drinking beer this evening, so it's nice. What, your Doom Bar? Just a little bit of Doom Bar, yeah. Richard Phelan says, £20 for a box of 50 sheets. Well, that's actually quite reasonable, I suppose. Yeah. And Kevin at 9K says, uh, Susie, what was that? Show that. Uh, Kevin at 9K says, Susie, the mix pack at Ely Woodturners is £2 for five sheets. All right. All sounded up. The wood dude says, Susie, I sell used Abronet. <laughs> Please DM me for samples. <laughs> <laughs> You're a tower, Stephen. Stephen's always looking for a way to. He also gets his on his first ten, that's a lie. Well, first ten since the last one. <laughs> yeah, first ten since. All right, so I want to have a go at this texturing on this shaft now. I've left some meat there just in case it goes peak tong. Like so, a... so, go ahead, yeah. All right, the texturing thing, yeah, okay. So, do I go down or do I go up? I've no idea, mate. I've never tried it, so I can't help you with that one. Somebody in the chat will tell us, though. So, Kevin, now in case there's small sheets, though. So, what size of sheets do these things come in? This abronet or, or um, net abrasive. These sheets are 120 long by 65 wide. Right, so five inches by three inches ish. Just like that, yes. All right, mm. there you go. I'm going for it. So you just have to keep doing this, you just keep repeating this, don't you? Apparently so. Yep. Without moving it. Yeah, well, you got to get in the same place at the beginning all the time, haven't you? I don't think that's working. That just looked... Oh, I don't know, though. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you might need to angle a bit more. I don't know. Is that the biggest spaced wheel, yeah? Yeah. That is a spiraling tool, not the cutting tool. It's a bit aggressive. That's just going to make a mess um, of that. It's a bit Rob soft. Said, it? It's a bit soft. Uh, Rob, Rob from Kingsport has said, if you like the Abernet product, that's fine. But to save some money next time you uh, next time you buy, ask for Abernet Auto. It's the same product and half the price. Uh, same maker. Uh, it has. It was a way. F it was a way for them to sell cheaper and save face. So for the auto industry, for obviously for sanding down cars, I'm taking it as what it's for. They've been selling it cheaper, more expensive to woodworkers. Hmm. It's cheeky. I I can remember Rob seeing that before in somebody else's uh, channel. So the wood dude says you just have to keep going, Steve, to get the barley twist. Yeah. But second okay. more might be the wrong wood for it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a bit soft. Let's just churn it out. Ah. Look who's in. FKO has joined us. Four king owls. All right, Rob. Welcome along, buddy. Yeah, Lewis has just said that would work on... Uh, well, on harder woods, I think. 
Yeah, it needs to be a hard. We'd all get a bit of hard. We'd not have a practice, and we'll you try again. The, you could see the spiral starting to happen there, but it's just well, it's just uh, carrying out too much, wasn't it? Yeah. That's okay. It's worth a try. Uh, Rob says sheets are two hundred and thirty by two eighty mil, and the strips are ninety three by two thirty and seventy by one twenty five. Okay. And that's the Klingspore version. I take it you're talking about, Rob. We'll have to try some. Wow. Susie said that in uh, Switzerland, I can, she can only get the wood turning abernet, and it's eleven pounds sterling for ten sheets of the wow. size that Steve is the size that you're using. Eleven pounds for ten sheets. Yep. Wow. It's over a pound a sheet. And she says, I wouldn't know where to get the auto type and never heard of it. You might want to try some, uh, um, what does he call them places that does all the car parts, Steve? Automotives. Auto, yeah, automotive places. Um, there are lots of, lots of places that just sell to garages and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah we've, got, we've got one in our local town that sells nothing but spray equipment for the garages. Yeah. Yeah, Rob just advised the same thing. Go to, go to an outlet that deals with car repairs. Yep. Uh, Wood Dude says auto products are cheaper because it's a professional trade. Wood turning is considered a hobby. Yep. Well, that's probably 100% right. Uh, Kev says... Auto Abernet, 70 by 185, 50 sheets for £340. Is that, did you mean to put that in, Kev? Is that the right price? Is that what you said? No, £34.99. <laughs> oh, factors, that's it. Motor factors, that's the, that's the word I was looking for, Andy. Yeah, motor factors. She's getting a bit delicate. I don't want to go much further than that. <laughs> you want to support the cup maybe in your tail stump? Well, I could do. You could do. Don't have to if you don't want to. Frederick Day says, question, is that aspiring tool and not aspire? Is that the texturing tool and not aspiring tool? I yes. can't tell the difference. That's the spiraling tool you were using, isn't it? No, it's a texturing tool. Is it? That's a texturing tool. That's a Robert Solby texturing tool. The big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that the cutter middle. that you've got on there is called a spiraling tool. Is it? I don't know. That's yeah, what came with it. Is, yeah. Oh, right, I don't know. The cutter's what... a spiraling tool, Oh, yeah. right, okay, that's what came with it. So. The other one, the, have you got the other ones, Steve? Did you get the other heads as well? No, 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 I just got that one. Just got that right, one so that's a spiraling tool. That, oh, okay. That's what that is. It can be used for texture if you hold it up upright. Right. And uh, you can get you can get spiraling texture marks if you tip it over. The other cut the other ones are cutters. They've actually got a sharp edge and a, and a, a, a chamfered edge. Right. Okay. Come with you. That you get the, for the wheels that you can change over. So I'll put my tennis ball in there just for a little bit of support. <laughs> Lucy said, "Is Mark the gentleman wood turner watching? The uh, stem's getting thinner, and if so, you'll be getting stressed." <laughs> That's not very nice, Lewis. <coughs> you you break a stem once, you know. Or you do it again and again and uh, In the UK, 115 millimeter times 50 meter rule sells for around 40 pounds. What? <coughs> that ball's oh. a little bit too small. For that. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'll, um... Oh, is it? Okay, so... Hmm. That's just going to cause it to wobble and put more stress on it. I'm only going to yeah, sand it. I'm only going to sand it anyway now. Oh, mm -hmm. I wanted to put a bit of texture on it, didn't I? You did. But you should have done it. <laughs> Mark says, I'm not getting stressed. Not my goblet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite right, Mark. So I'll just sand this down gently. It's only a bit of wood in it. 
Yeah, Stephen the Wood Dude says, Steve, go thinner, just for the entertainment value. Uh, let me think about that. No. Uh, no. <laughs> I knew we were going to say that. If I break it, I'll be calling me the gentleman wood turner. Steve, Steve says, uh, Steve the Wood Dude says, Steve the Wood Dude says, does Mark make goblets? <laughs> he does. He had the best trainer. Mark, what? Have you not have you not seen the big long stem spiral goblet that Mark did? It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, Lewis has said the end pressure can be the worst if, uh, than none if there are any defects in the wood. Definitely. And, and Robert Brockwood says, who needs 50 metres of sandpaper? Well, now you come to mention it, Rob. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> if there was five or six she's got together and bought 50 metres, you can have 10 metres each and it would last you forever. Like I say, I don't use a lot of sandpaper anyway, so. So I've, I've uh, heard Ruby advising people to when they're doing a goblet like that, rather than putting pressure on it, is to Stretch kind of tape, tape the goblet to the, the uh, live sander yeah. and add a little bit of tension rather than pressure. Because yeah, when oh, you put Ruby, pressure on it, Ruby's if, just said Ruby's just said that in the chat. Use tension, not compression. Yeah, because when you yeah. tension it, you're Sense. you're causing it in, aren't you? So you're causing stress in here. When you stretch it, <laughs> and Kevin Nike Creation says, "Yeah, we've seen what end pressure can on a vacuum does to walnut, Brian." <laughs> yeah, it did. Just the uh, on my live last night, the walnut bowl cracked. Did it? It cracked it on the rim because the, the pressure of the vacuum was pulling the centre in and it pushed the, the rim out and it cracked it. Oh, my God. My head, it was a big crack to everybody had it. <laughs> yeah. So I had the super glue. Good old super glue. You also regret it, especially if you get the guy who did the deal forgot to get some from himself. Well, that was your own fault, Glenn. I mean, sucker. <laughs> that sounds a like bad. a um, it's a uh, bit of bad you, luck you're having. Yeah, I'll sell you some, Glenn, mm. if you want some. I'll sell you some too, no bother. The wood dude says, Ruby, I always, I always pull, not push when it comes to thin stems. Yeah, me too. After hearing that advice from Ruby, I started doing that almost instantly. So, uh, Rob, Rob is suggesting, as is Clingspore, Rob again, uh, I need to find some outlets that are willing to sell it by the meter. Okay. Your guess says, pee off the pair of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very nice, Glenn. We're trying to help you out. We're trying to help you there. I mean, I'll say a reasonable price, like. I was thinking about £2.50 a metre. <laughs> I think that's a fair price for the economical, what's going on in the economy now. Yeah, Andrew at uh, Andrew AJK Woodwork says, I have a few in mind near me. Uh, Rob, there may be a couple of interesting leads for you, uh, Rob. He says, uh, Dad says, don't put the tennis ball in the end and use your end point. Yeah, but um, that's nice and smooth in there. I don't really want to mark it. Okay. That'll be all right. Well, I ain't going to yeah, go, no go no faster than that. I'm only sanding it and a little bit of texture. I think I might put a little bit of texture around this middle of this ball and a little bit around the top here, but other than that, I can support it while I'm doing that. I'll give it a shoulder to lean on. 
So there you go, Andrew. Uh, it says, please let me know when in GP it can give me some ideas in, in January. I'll be contacting them to try and set it up. So I hope everybody's got their Christmas sorted. Soon be around the corner. Three weeks today. It's Christmas. In, no, 23rd, isn't it? <sighs> Three weeks. So Frederick Day has said, uh, evening, Frederick. Um, I suppose you could still texture it if you had a lathe steady. I have. It's here. Two fingers. Just put my hand behind it while I'm pushing on it. It's not going fast. It's only about 400 RPM. So for anybody who didn't see the Facebook post I put up the other day or was in my Sunday lunchtime live, for the month of December up till the 31st of December, if it's 31, there is 31 days in December, isn't there? Yes. Um, I am doing... 10% off all of the buddy range. Uh, all orders between now and the 31st will have 10% on checkout taken off. You need to use the coupon code Xmas22, and that will take 10% off of all. Um, yeah, I mean, what a good deal that is. But it's only on the buddy range. It's not on everything that's on the, on the Made Me store. There should be next week. There should be uh, a new product added next week. Hopefully, um, we should know if the axe, not the yeah, the axe minister faceplate holder is good. So um, if it is, then that'll be going up as well. Hmm. So that, I know a lot of people have been asking about it. So I'm just waiting. I've got some more samples to send out to Pete. So as soon as Pete gets the new samples and tests them. We will know whether they are good to go or not. Now, the Andy Woodward Leonard says, I hope there's 31 days in December. That's my birthday. <laughs> uh, change this year, Andy. And uh, FKO has said, 22.5 uh, metre roll, 80 grit, 12 pounds 28. What? Wow. Yeah, but what is it? I don't use that much 80 grit anymore. I used to use it a lot, but I don't use it as much now. He's learned how to use a gouge now. The Yosh regret said, oh my God, this is like a rolling advert. Yeah, stop complaining. We could be advertising Yosh regret. Just a little mark in there. All right, so I sand it up. A little bit of texture now. So um, let's just get the mini texture. Where are you going to? Where are you going to texture? I'm just going to put a little bit around the rim, just some dots oh. around the rim. Ooh. Not around the rim, just below the rim. There. What are you shooting for? Right, I'm going to hold my breath here now. Why? Because this is going to break. It's not going to break. Yeah, the postage to Switzerland is quite expensive. Um, as I've just discovered. <laughs> Susie was complaining that it cost her 20, 20 pounds to get stuff delivered from Iceland. It's not as dear as 20 pounds, I have to say, but it's uh, quite expensive. All right, so just some little lines around there. <clears throat> Just some little lines. John Smith said, the first time I've been watching the SK and I'm impressed. We'll be watching on a regular basis. Thank oh. you very much, John. Thank you very much. Glad you enjoy. We try our best. And Ben Jamin says, to celebrate Steve's goblet, I'm having a spot of ice cream. <laughs> he, knows oh. how to, he knows how to spoil himself, doesn't he? He knows how to push the boat out, doesn't he? Yeah, Ruby Claire has just said what I was thinking. 
You should have done that when you formed it outside of the cup. Uh, don't fret. Not left it to the end. Don't fret. Be fine. Be fine. Yeah, no, but it's not good. It's not. It's not good practice, though, really, is it? You should finish the cup completely before you move on to the stem. Basically. Yeah, that's all right if you remember. Yeah, no, I know. That's your... I forgot, all right? I forgot. But... Yeah, you're all right. You're all right, mate. Don't worry. So just a little bit. says says he's on his second Dunbar. <laughs> that's only in 20 minutes. in less than 20 minutes. Kevin Hinke says, yeah, uh, John Smith, yeah, uh, he's quite good, isn't he? Just good too. Well, sometimes. <laughs> and Roy the Boy says, question, question, question. Can you, can you answer the question? Do you know the question before I ask it? He says, well, when is the plum being done? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a texture before I can colour it, Roy. Right. Oh, we're doing colour as well. Wow. Oh, yeah. Pushing the boat out tonight. Yeah. Must be near Christmas, I reckon. I'm thinking that. Don't you do a Christmas goblet now? I'm going to have to... No, I'm not doing a Christmas goblet. Have a word with you about this. No, I'm not doing a Christmas goblet. <laughs> the doctor says, yeah, I'm getting a taste. I'm getting a taste for it now. Yeah, yeah oh, right, Glenn. Oh. What the extract from? Suck out that out. You can drink beer by osmosis. Right, so... Colours... Um, I think, I think, I think. Oh, God. Plum. Plum, yeah. That and that plum. A bit of black in there and a bit of gold, I reckon. What do you think? You, I, I thought you were going to see yellow then. No, no, yeah, not yellow. So what I need to do is I just need to burn that so we've got a desired finish Ooh, we're point. We're burning it first, aren't we? Well, I need to burn it there. To stop my plum yeah. running into that, and I need to burn it there to stop the plum oh, running into yeah. that. Just been burning a line on it. Yeah, so I need to burn a little bit there, just to stop my plum running into. Cool. Don't want to burn. Yeah, might, have to get, many, might, have, might have to get my lollipop. How many, revolu how many revolutions have you got? More now. There we go. So burn line there and a burn line there just to stop the colours bleeding together. So we'll Ruby just... Clear says Ruby Clear says no. Only colour the texture parts. Oh okay. And there's a question here from Four Crane He says, Steve, today I got a two ender three pros three D printer with loads of filament and upgrades for three hundred quid. Nice. The question is, do you have uh, any uh, MSVG files I can use for practice? If you go on to, you know, um, you if you message me, I'll send you a link for a company called Thinker Thieves. And there's loads of files on there you can download and play with. Free if ones. I don't, yeah, free ones. If I don't colour that, then you're not really going to see this texture, are you? I'm not reading that out, Andy. <laughs> but it, uh, it relates to, to underwear and plums, so I'm not reading that out. Um, I think I'm going to do like I said, I'm going to do that plum, that plum. Because if I don't colour it, you ain't going um, to see, see the texture. So let me get rid of some of this first. <laughs> would do to say this nail biting goblet turning has made me think about having an adult, an adult beverage. <laughs> uh, goes, SVG files, I think, is what he's looking for. SVG files, STL files, STL files would be better. STL, yeah, STL files would be better. But like I say, message me and then I will send you a link for Thinker Thieves and then you can um, 
you can go on there and there's loads of test pieces on there you can download to calibrate your machine. Because the biggest thing with 3D printing is, is getting your machine calibrated and getting the filament f feed correct and this, that, and the other. If you don't get none of that correct, then you'll end up with uh, rubbish prints. <laughs> so, so Rob says, okay, I'm sensing something wrong with this live stream. I wonder what he's talking about there. I don't know. Perhaps he's got and a pause. And, and Frederick Day says... Uh, could you use a felt tip pen on the texture? It might be easier. You could, I'm sure. Yeah, you could do. But we don't want it easy, do we? Right, so let's bring the intrinsics colours over. So I'm Ooh, using Hampshire Sheen intrinsics. intrinsics. Uh, I should get some gloves on, because if not, my hands will be... Blue. Plum. Uh, Andy says there are lots of good free STL files available uh, and great YouTube channels too. So do some research. Yep. Use the search bar. So what we're looking for, plum. It's, oh, that's empty. Oh, no, we can't do oh, it. Right? It's not. We can't do plum. Oh, dear. Let's fill it up. Uh, There are, there are a whole lot of inappropriate jokes going on here about plums. Yeah. So I'm not running. I'm just not reading them. You can read them yourself. I blame Roy. He wanted a plum. It's, it's Roy's fault. It's all Roy's fault. I remember Rob says, looking good, Steve. Got to run the Legion's calling. See you later, Catch mate. the balance later. Thanks, Thanks coming Brent, over. for coming in. Have a good evening. <laughs> Kev, Kev says Steve's always out of plum. Mm. Right. Steve's a builder. Steve's a builder. He does everything in plum. That's our thing. We don't use magnolia, we use plum. I actually don't like doing that. Spraying with the, the lathe rag. Why? Don't know, I just don't like it. Don't ever seem to get the right coverage. As Susie Swoodner says, could you do the top and bottom in red? Oh, too late. <laughs> Instead of plum. Well, and the middle the plum? of black. And she wants some she wanted the middle of black, so red at the top, red at the bottom, black in the middle. Oh, too late. Too late, Mr. Susie, sorry. Ah, uh, she was a bit worried that you actually didn't have plum. You see? I got she plum. She was being considerate, you see, you could use red. I got plum. Yeah, we know. You were just bluffing, trying to upset Barry. Roy. Oh, sorry, Roy. A new heat gun, that. Woo! Yeah, get it, Nages. We've all seen Brian spraying. Yeah, I know. I have Heavy my own technique. Is the no, I have my own technique, Kev. So that's all I'm saying. I have my own technique. <laughs> and Lucy loves the color. Thank you. The plum is quite rich, I have to say. Even richer than that once you get a bit of sand and sealer on it. Makes it pop out a bit. For sure. It's 9.30, Steve. Oh, is it? Just, yep. Well, I'm going to get a move on them. And we've got 74 people watching. Thank you very much, everybody. Right, so we're just going to do the bottom there. So again, just light blast it in. Andy is being very, uh, very observant. He says, uh, "What did you do with the old heat gun, Steve? That made you buy the new one?" The other one, the other one was a bit it hit and miss with uh, heating up. One minute it wouldn't heat up, and then it would. And intermittent heating. Yeah, I think the the trigger. Not much good. 
the trigger might be a bit dodgy on it, but my dad brought that one over last Saturday for me. A switch was done. His old one. And, so. and Susie, the Swiss wood tunnel says, gold leaf inside would look stunning with this plum. It would. It would, but you're not getting it. And Frederick Days asked a sensible question. That's probably one of the only sensible questions done. Well, there's been a few. <laughs> That's a bit unfair. He says, will you have to denib after using the colour? Yes. Yes, we will. There you go. And Colin, uh, Wood Wizardry. Purple is one of my favourite colours. <laughs> Pete from Twister Tree says, heating bowls on the fireplace is not a good technique, Brian. <laughs> yeah, he's referring to the bowl that Michelle threw in my fire, threw one of my bowls in the fire. Well, she didn't really, I did. It was a little practice piece that was uh, destined for the fire pit. So it went in the fire this evening. And I got told off because extreme pyrography is apparently Pete's. Um, uh, he has the copyright on extreme biography. So I got a copyright strike from the Pete of the Twisted Trees. All right. So I just want a little bit more Ruby on that. Not Ruby. Ruby. I've got Ruby on the brain. Is that plum you mean? Is that what you're trying to on say? This, on this edge. I thought you were putting gold leaf in the inside. I will do. Maybe. I think you're not getting gold leaf, Susie. Sorry. Not tonight, she's not. No, it takes too long, isn't it? So just bring that ruby just down that just a little tiny bit. So what colour are we doing, Ethan? I know. What, what did you decide? I was going to do that black. Black. But I don't know if they do that. Would that look wrong, ruby red, or would that be... Would that look wrong? It's going to have to be a fairly dark colour anyway, now that you've covered it half in purple. Well, I wanted to say it was look like it's feathering in. That's what I was aiming for. Oh, here we go. Uh, Rob from Kingsport says, with the top of the bottom dark violet, the middle looks like uh, looks like to be glowing. Looks like it's what? Glowing. Glowing. Yeah, it does actually. Looks like there's a light in it. It's very bright. Well, it does on it does on the uh, on the uh, live on the Zoom channel, but on on when I'm looking at it on Facebook, YouTube, it's not as quite as bright. Let's just put a little bit of ruby on there and see what happens. Oh, Susie the Swiss would tell us says copper. Ben says, wait, what happened to the spiral idea? You fell asleep, Ben. That's what happened to the spiral idea. <laughs> it, we tried it, and it was uh, the wood was too soft, basically. Frederick Day said a gold stem might look good. And Andy says red and gold. Gold is a hard colour to... Because you got to put black down first, don't you? Yeah, um, gold. To get a good gold, but I can put well, a black down. I can put black on it. That's not a problem. You can't, if you put gold over light wood, it doesn't really. It comes gold, but not a gold, a deep gold. Yeah, you need to put a dark color under it first. To... Oh, you need to undercoat it with something. Yeah. <laughs> so what I do is I just put a bit of black under it. Susie said, "Gold stem." But they've, they've painted it red now, so. So I'll just do that bit there, black. And he wants it pink. He said, just to be awkward. And Ben's excuse was that he was doing the washing. Yeah, right, Ben. We're listening to that. So black. Then I'll put a bit of gold over it then. Okay. But I was gonna gold I was gonna gold embellish it because it's got texture in it, so the gold should pop through it. That's what I was gonna do. Okay. Uh, we'll see. 
Right, so that's the bit of gold, black, even. And Pete, Peter the Twister Tree says gold leaf looks better over the red base. Over a red base. No, I've not done a lot of how, how, how does How does that work, Pete? Well, you put red down first and you put gold over the top of it. You, would, you can't see through the gold leaf. How's it going to make any difference? don't know. Perhaps it's a psychological thing. I don't know. Simon says gold in the texturing, so maybe a bit of gold embellishing wax in the texturing. That's what I was going to do. I was going to put some gold embellishing wax over it. Okay. Just clean this gun out quickly. One of my dogs is padding up and down the hallway. That's the spirits. Which makes me think Michelle's not there. Couldn't have went to bed. She's asleep on the sofa with a border. <clears throat> Kev Chef says that's a chalice and not a goblet. You're correct. No, yeah. I have the chalice. From the life of Brian. Thick as stem in it, chalice. So when does a when does a goblet become a chalice? I thought it was a stem. I might be wrong. <laughs> Pete says, I don't know, Brian, but I demoed it once and it works. Magic, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Pete. I love it. All right, so we're going to draw this, get some sand and sealer on it. Then we will get some embellished wax on it. I'll chuck that on the floor. Right, sand and sealer. Louis says, uh, not sure red will work now. Maybe, maybe make that gold too. Top bolt is straight and not curved. Is that what makes it a chalice? Oh, okay. There you go. Ruby has just answered the question there. She said, Pete, red was always used under gold leaf for calligraphy. Ah. Well, you learn something every day. You do indeed. Every day is a school day, boys. And girls. So Flay, uh, Simon says there's a white bowl on a chalice. I have a chalice. I may have to make a new one on Monday. Cup of Christ. That's a, is that a chalice or is that a goblet? Um, I suspect that's a goblet. I don't think it's wide enough to be a chalice. And Kevin in k says, yep, for me a chalice has a, has a straight bowl. So kind of straight sides and turned in. I don't know. Well, that is fairly straight, yeah. Hmm. First the old bit of wood that is. Jesus. <laughs> Roy, Roy the boy says, <clears throat> question, question, can we see the inside bit quickly? Please. So tail stop camera, please. Ooh, that's dark in there. I'll put a light in that for you. Is that is that just the uh, plum that's in there? Yep. I was going to do a black, but I left it. Plum. No, plum. Plum's actually good in the inside. I use that a lot in the inside of stuff and vases and stuff. Uh, Lewis says, you know a man is confident in his airbrushing when he seals it before looking at the coverage. <laughs> i got five, Lewis. Oh, Kev says, it should be a chalice for Easter and not Christmas. Okay. These are the little traditions that I like to kind of fudge a little bit. 
A chalice is for sharing, so wide round so uh, you can drink from opposite sides. Also have a thicker stern due to larger quantities of alcohol. Uh, people have often fall, <laughs> people have often fallen down when holding them. Hmm. John Smith says you could always call it a gobless. Gobless. Right, so I'm going to get some shavings now, and I'm just going to. No, I'm not, because if I do that, I'm going to get dust all in the grain and in the texture, so I'll use a uh, scotch Bright just to denib it. Yeah, and the wood user says, the chalice from the palace has the brew that's true. <laughs> and Rob says, you can, you, can take a, you can take a poison chalice, but I've not heard of a poison goblet. Okay, fine. Right, the boy says, that's fine, Brian. When Nicky drinks the red wine from it, it won't matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> Andy says, how's this for luck? Shed is up, got materials to line and insulate it. Can't stand up enough to fit the damn stuff. Oh, dear. That's not good. Overhead again, Steve. Sorry. So I'm just burnishing that sand and sealer to give me a bit of a, as you can see, you can just see a little bit of a sheen coming on there. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just burnishing the sand and sealer. So when we put our wax over it, we, we're not relying on the wax so much to to create our shine. <laughs> now, Lucia just said, Andy has been descending into laughter, and I don't know why. Right, so we'll get some embellishing wax out. Frederick Day has a, a, has a theory on the goblet chalice thing. He says, I think a goblet is for normal everyday use, i.e. banquets, etc. That's everyday use. <laughs> yeah, and a chalice is for ceremonial use, maybe. That's possible. Very possible. And, and, and Lewis says, I take I take back what I said about the red now. <laughs> Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Of course they are. So I'm just going to cover the whole piece in this gold embellishing wax. And in any case, says, that's, uh, uh, that's nice. <laughs> Lucy says, a chalice is used for communion. True. <laughs> Rob's, Rob's chimed in, he says, there are so many jokes to make about goblets. Some of them might not be appropriate, Rob. Huh. Right, the boy says, does this still have some dry spots? Yeah, it did there. It's very, it's very dry there. But I really wanted two or three more coats of Sand and sealer, but time's getting on, Roy. So we'll see what it looks like. So I'm just going to rub this in, making sure we get a good coverage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cloth. Put a lid back on. Use the cloth that the embellishing wax is on to start with, just to sort of work it in. <laughs> I did a wood what Leonard has just said. Brian. Is Steve using that embellishing wax correctly? And how would I know? <laughs> of course he is. You just slap it on, basically, and puff it back off again. That's how you use it. It's not difficult. Says the embellishing wax master. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Lewis has said, I shouldn't give opinions on colouring. I'm not the international colouring expert. No, 
Mike Walt was the international culinary expert. Or I should have said that Mike Walt might be the English culinary expert. Or I should have said Welsh. Oh, sure, <laughs> or the UK's um, culinary expert. Uh, you could be the international representative for this. That would be fine. <laughs> Much of a oneness when it comes to colouring. Except when you're using resin, of course, then you're quite good at it. So a little bit of pressure will just burnish this up just to give us a little bit of a sheen on it. And that'll save us having to Put a wax over the top of it because with the embellishment and the texturing, the wax would get in the texture and make it go whitey colour, which is mm. not what we really want. Yeah, not really. <laughs> Lucy saying, Andy is now sampling Norfolk accents for my benefit. <laughs> <laughs> Norfolk. Yeah, that'll be the heavy Norfolk accent. Steve hasn't really got anymore. So you can just see the texture has just highlighted the green. <laughs> so we've got to do now is just get it off of it, dropping it. Easier said than done, he says. So just part it uh, off. Andy Rudolph Leonard says, Brian, when are you next using resin? No, I have no answer for that. Nobody sent me any resin. I thought you bought some. Actually, I bought I bought some resin. I actually bought eight ounces of resin to make a straw full of resin. That's reusable drinking straws. That's what he's making. Yeah. I need, a, I need a small piece of resin about two inches long, about the size of a straw, and I bought eight ounces of resin, so I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest. I can give you some ideas. <laughs> Thanks, Steve, but... Uh... No. <laughs> the answer is no. So just put that over there for now. I was going to talk to you about resin, actually. Oh, really? Mm. Oh. Right, so let's just get that out of there quickly. Let's quickly stick that in there and just sand the bottom up quickly. And we'll be finished. Just got a little nib on the bottom where um, obviously we've turned it off. Take my gloves off now. Yeah, YouTube, uh, Kev, <laughs> that, uh, comment, the last comment that Kev just put in. Uh, it was held by YouTube, by the way. What? <laughs> YouTube didn't like it. Well, I am not going to say it. It, say, it says something on I can't do it in an accent, but it says something on the... It says, Are he do be boy Tarkin squirt, Lucy? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what the accent for that is, but no matter. Oh, Frederick Days asked a question. Uh, can you use spray lacquer? <coughs> oh, can you use spray lacquer off that type of embellishing wax? You mean over that type of embellishing wax? The answer is yes, you can. And a serious question from Kevin Nk, just for a change, Kevin. <laughs> do you colour the bottom, Steve? I will do, but I won't do it tonight. I will do it, but not tonight. Once I get all the marks out of it, I'll just... Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just indent in the middle so it actually sits on the edge of the rim and on the foot, not on the, on the middle of it. So I've just yes. got the grits now. Joe Senior says, that's looking lovely, Steve. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and Pete of the Twisted Tree says, but Brian, we decided to use a glass stem. So if you have all eight ounces of resin to use some of that, <laughs> you just need to buy some different colours, powders... Of <laughs> every five grams of oh dear Pete. I actually bought the thing I bought is a little 
starter kit thing. And it's got the uh, self leveling resin or resist yellowing 40 minute working time. And it's got all sorts of things in it. It's got different things in it. <laughs> oh, look, there's mica powders and everything in here. Oh, and little glitter bombs and stuff as well. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah. Uh... And what are these oh. little, little sample bottles of something? Oh, I've just dropped them. So that'll do little, that. So little, little bottles, little mixing cups and little uh, bottles of epoxy resin colorant. Red, green, blue, yellow. Those are kind like. of... You can there actually you use... Um, you can actually use... Is it epoxy resin? Uh, is it, oh, I don't know, is it epoxy if it's resin? epoxy yeah, resin, epoxy, you, yeah. you can use yep, acrylic. You can you can use acrylic paints in it to colour it. You can use uh, Hampshire sheen and transit colours to colour it. I could use uh, Bulger's acrylic. Uh, yep. Dyes that I've got. So there you go. There's me gobble it. Wonderful, Steve. So, plum just for you, Roy. Um, Bit of ruby red, bit of black, gold embellishing wax over the top of it. A little bit of texture around the top, a little bit of texture around the middle there, just to give it some stipples. <laughs> Rob from Clingsport has just put in a comment. He says, why is it? I have watched a few wood turners examine others' work, and the first thing they do is examine the bottom. Exactly, always do, always do. Because, because that's the bit that doesn't get finished properly. And bottom that's how you tell if it's been finished. The bottom is as important as the rest of the piece. And Ruby has just chimed in there. She says, Rob, the bottom should look as good as the top. Yeah, it certainly uh, should. 100%. It's not finished unless the bottom is done. Exactly. So, anyway, nice little goblet. Something Kevin different. K, Kevin Nanke says, nice, Steve. See you, uh, see you a week on Wednesday. You'll understand that, obviously. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the Christmas uh, Kingdom Wood Turners. Oh, hopefully. okay. John Smith says, I must congratulate you on a great demo. Uh, I'm glad I found this site and I will be watching again. Oh, thank you, John. And Hope you can been... come in and watch me as well, John, if you want, on a Monday evening. Glad you enjoy us. We are here to entertain. And like I said at the beginning, it's all about sharing knowledge with each other, help improve each other. And uh, if you learn something, it's an added bonus. Well, if you got, actually, actually, if you learn, actually, if you learn something, it's a bloody miracle. <laughs> yeah, I've, got, I've got three words that I keep in my head when I'm trying to do a demonstration or, or when I'm trying to do a live on YouTube. And that is to entertain, educate and inspire. And you, three words you need to keep me And he usually gets one out of the three. If you get one out of three, you're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Entertain, educate, and inspire. And, and and none of them is more important than the other. So there's my bottom. I will colour it. I'll colour it um, plum to match the top. But uh, Ben says uh, is mentioned as Nicky show is on on Sunday. Oh yes, Correct. Nicky will be back. She'll keep Sunday. me in tow, and I'll just be in the background making a noise. Um, uh, Kevin AK says, John, Steve's here on Sunday as well. Brian, what days am I on? I'm on on Monday night at 7 o'clock and Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Yep. Actually, I'm thinking about change. Right, I've got a quick question for the chat. Let me just go. Let's just bring you back. Ooh, survey, survey time. So, as, turn these lights off. as you know, Brian's changed his time to 7 o'clock. And we, me and Brian, was having, or me, Brian and Terry was having this discussion a few weeks ago about whether it would be the right time. If you guys don't mind, I would like to change mine to seven o'clock. But if it's an issue where people can't make it, then I'll keep it at quarter to eight. I just think seven o'clock is a little bit better. Um, sometimes, like tonight, look, we've run and we're nearly in ten o'clock. Um, seven o'clock, if we did, only be nine o'clock. So that's a little bit better for people. Oh, hello, Harold. How are you? Um, so. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'll move till seven o'clock, but let me know in the chat quickly before we go, because if you, if it's an issue, then I'll stay at quarter to eight. 
I like seven o'clock. And Pete had twisted trees has has, has made a comment about the uh, examining your bottoms. He says green felt stops wood turners examining your bottoms. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So that's just another stage you got to do, isn't it? Then. Yep. Why are them jaws chucked? Lucy says we will be watching again too. You popped up as a notification. Oh, thank you, Lucy. Oh, there you go. You must have been subscribed, Lucy. Good job. Well done. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you very much. Nice to see some new faces in. Uh, John Smith says your three words are a hundred percent right, Brian. Entertain, educate, and inspire. That's the whole. That's what any demonstration should cause. Any any demonstration you do ever should be that. And and it doesn't have to be in equal doses. It could be entertained mostly and a tiny little bit of education and but then a bit of inspiration. So keep the three words in mind when you're doing your if you're doing any kind of demonstration. The thing I, I, I like about the group was I mean like Brian, Terry, <coughs> myself we try not to be too serious. The the idea is you're having fun. If you're turning yeah. and you're not having fun, then you're not, you're not doing it the right way. Yeah. It's it's the the it's becoming a job. Now. Yeah, life life is too short. You need to be able to enjoy what you do. And the idea of you know, I mean, we always say on a Friday night, it's fun time. It's the end of the week. It's a working week. I know not everybody's working. You know, not everybody works. They're retired, but. Anybody who works is the end of the work and week, and it's just a time to relax and chill out, ready for your weekend. And um, if we can have a little bit of fun, a little bit of entertainment, that's why we do the special guest airworm and the battle of the makers, just to break up a little bit. And it just brings that little bit of entertainment into your guy. You mean the guys is in the chat and us just breaks it up a little bit as well, because there's a thousand and one channels out there all about wood turning. Um, and no disrespect, there's nothing new in wood turning. We're only we're only reinventing stuff that's already been done, or putting a little tweak on it, putting our own little tweak on it. So it's just nice to um, try and make it a little bit entertaining at the same time. Correct. So everybody's saying seven o'clock is great, then. Yep, yeah, seven o'clock seems to be a good time for everybody. Now, some people don't care because they're seven hours behind. Right, okay. Ron, for example, he's, he's seven hours behind. He doesn't care. And somebody else said it's, uh, as long as it's 7 p.m. and not a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Simon says no issue with seven. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Michael General Wood Tunnel says, uh, oh, hum, hum, uh, hum. What's, I don't know what what's that about? Don't know what that means. I have no idea. No idea what that means. Right, so what I'll do then, we might have to still do the bat, the the um, special guest there when we're caught wait, but I'll speak to the people. Yeah. Um, but other than that, from next Friday, we will go from seven o'clock. So awesome, awesome, awesome! Thank you very much for that. Yeah, you may have. We might have to give the special rooms a bit more yeah. time to get organised. Yeah, because obviously yeah. they work and everything else. Uh, Rob, Rob says uh, I have four sectors I am working on, and uh, and this is one. I want to watch, and it's fun and educational. Oh, thank you very much, Rob. That's exactly what we're looking for. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Woodward's River Collins says, and the hashtag week is a great challenge, too. It's, it's not a challenge. No. So it's just getting you in your workshop whenever an you go. It's an, it's an inspirational thing to try and inspire you to get out and do something. That's all that so I, Give you an idea rather than challenge. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek of something that, oh, oh, that, that um, Pete from Twister Trees came up with the idea. But I've put it into practical use, hopefully, and um, we're going to be testing them, and hopefully there'll be something added to the buddy range. So this Ooh. is a tool post holder. Hmm. So we. I just drilled holes in my bench to hold the tool post. Animal. What can I say? So these are going to be getting tested over the next few weeks. So hopefully they will. <laughs> they will. They will be. Joining the buddy range. Unfortunately, they're just not big enough to put anything buddy range on them, though. But never mind. I have to say that Donna, the love angel, has just joined us. Good evening, Donna. And she says, uh, she says, <laughs> I meant to have a nap for an hour, but it lasted for six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you must have needed it. That's all I can say. Yeah. So, right. Don't forget, guys. Um, I'll be back Sunday. Wayne's on tomorrow night. Terry's on lunchtime Monday. Brian's on Monday, Monday. evening. Brian's on again right. Thursday evening. Uh, Wayne's on yep. Wednesday night. Tuesday, Mark's doing Tuesday night now, isn't he? Mark, I don't know if Mark's doing Tuesday or not. I think he is. Tuesday night, says Mark. So Mark's doing Tuesday night, um, and we're back Friday. So full week again. Um, also, don't forget, 10% off all the buddy range on... Can you just chuck in my Made Me store? Can you find it, or do you want me to find it? I'll find it, actually. Oh, Steve, you find it, Steve. You'll know where to look for it. Um, so I'm going to put the link in for my Made Me. Um there's ten percent off of all the buddy range at the moment, and that will be running cool. till the thirty first of December to create to oh hang on, I don't know if I can So Ron says he's heading to his workshop. Um well she's looking for that. He says uh, he's gonna see his lathe and still done. It's minus twenty one degrees C. Wow. <laughs> well good luck, Ron. <laughs> That's freezing. I can't find it on there. Let me see if I can find it on. Uh, ben says, uh, why have you abused your shelves with those Christmas decorations, Brian? Because it's Christmas. <laughs> Brian loves Christmas. Oh, I love Christmas. I have to show you this. This is my, my Highland, personally. Little Highland Santa Claus with these bike pipes. I think his batteries need fixed. Yeah, enough of that. <laughs> Put that back up there. Gee whiz. Right, oh, so... Pull your, kilt, pull your kilt down, big lad. Not with flashing there. Right, so this is the link for the Made Me store. So, everything 10% off of all the um, Buddy Range stuff. Buddy. You need to put in on coupon code XMAS22. So... Um, I hate that word, Xmas. Xmas. I well, it's a, bit, it's a bit better than Christmas 2022, and that was a little bit shorter. I know, but I just hate it. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, oh, Grandpa Jim. I miss, I miss Grandpa Jim. Hello, oh, Grandpa Hi, Jim. Grandpa Hello, Jim. Devil, Sorry, I missed you earlier, mate. He says, always a very good time with oh, you guys. Thank you very Thanks, much. Jim. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate We're it. We're going to go. Thank you very much for coming and joining us. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Harold. It's been entertaining as always. Um, <laughs> we should be back to a full crew on next Friday. So Should be. please come over and join us. If we don't see you before, we will see you next Friday. So have a great weekend. Have a great week. Take care. Get ready for Christmas. Spend time with your loved ones, all the other stuff. But we're going to go. So mate, thanks for coming over, guys. Good night. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye, everybody. That's all, folks.